Hi, Ali. Just like you said. Pure science. That's what I'll try and do. Um, I can't do it perfectly because um, if I were to be purely scientific everything but the last question I would have to say I don't know to and I don't think you'd be very satisfied with that so I'll put my head on the chopping block and see if you bring the axe down um, do I believe in the multiverse and do I believe uh, or is there any way that it's testable yes I do believe in the multiverse um, I come at it from my own personal angle, and this has nothing to do with science whatsoever. Um, when I was a kid, I always thought that if there were one universe and there were life in it, that was simply too much of a long shot. So I always thought that there were other, mul uh, other universes, long before I heard the expression multiverse, which I believe was coined by Martin Rees, um, the British Astronomer Royal, although I could be wrong. Um, so I believed in that idea long before I'd ever heard anyone else put it forward. So, I invented the idea. Okay. Um, that's where I got an inkling of it. But I understand that physics started seriously adopting the idea as a result of um, some other ideas. One of which was the idea of inflation, or the theory of inflation, put forward by Alan Guth. Um, I'm going to put a link to an article about Alan Guth, because he seems to be the, um, the top cosmologist at the moment, as regards the Big Bang cosmologies anyway. Um, and he came up with the theory of inflation, which is a, a, a rapid uh, period of growth just after the Big Bang. And when I say just after, I don't mean a tenth of a second. I mean a te uh, ten to the minus thirty-five of a second, which is naught point thirty-five zeros and a one of a second. So it's trillionths of trillionths of a second after the Big Bang. This this expansion began, the inflationary period of expansion. And within that theory, although I don't understand why, it seems to hint at the possibility of other universes with um, differing laws of physics where life wouldn't be possible in most cases, the vast majority of cases. Um, so yes, I, I ascribe to that for my own personal reasons um, not so much because of theories that I don't fully understand. It seems to me quite a rational assumption that if you find yourself in a universe which happens to have life um, that there are universes where life wouldn't be possible. Okay. Um, is it testable? I don't think it's testable at the moment. I've, I've heard a couple of times people say that there might be something in the background radiation which might hint at the possibility of other universes. But I didn't understand those, so I can't really give them any weight um, but there are ideas out there at the moment I don't think it's a yes no uh, test or there is a yes no test at the moment um, but as we learn more about the structure of the universe uh, about space time and about quantum mechanical reactions it may be in the future um, possibly the distant future where we find something about this universe which indicates which it may have sprouted off another universe or has the potential to sprout universes of this one we don't know um, it's not testable at the moment it may be testable in the future uh, but I doubt I'm gonna see it now what was your other question what drives the expansion I don't know I'm gonna be saying that a lot um, I've heard people mention scalar fields, uh, S-C-A-L-A-R, E-R fields. Um, don't fully understand those. Uh, I've also heard a, a lot of people talk about false vacuums and um, a way in which energy comes out of the false vacuum and almost feeds on itself. Uh, 
it cascades once there's a bit more it demands a bit more which demands a bit more which demands a bit more and basically the universe picks itself into existence by lifting itself up by its own bootstraps you actually hear bootstrapping in some conversations about big bang cosmology they don't always use very uh, scientific terms um, so I don't know what drove the expansion but again you probably will find a far better answer than I would be capable of if I did a month long video by reading that Alan Guth article um, it's fairly bizarre some of the ideas in there but it'll give you a flavor for how the top guys are thinking at the moment your more interesting question because there is actually an answer to this one um, the, the last one um, you said if cosmic rays are destroyed over a short distance why are we finding cosmic rays within our galaxy the answer to that one is that I don't think they are destroyed over short distances I don't know where you've got that from I think that's it's a poss possibly you're getting that from the fact that neutrinos change from one form to another as they come towards the earth uh, you might be getting it from the notion that neutrons decay quite shortly um, but they decay into electrons and protons and protons are the key because the vast majority of cosmic rays are protons some people get cosmic rays confused with gamma rays which are high energy forms of electromagnetic radiation or light um, cosmic rays are actual matter material normally protons accelerated it close to the speed of light it's their velocity which makes us talk about them as uh, rays they were first discovered um, in the 1800s I think when they were ionizing atoms in the atmosphere they were knocking electrons out of atoms in the atmosphere and the scientists at the time knew that it took quite a punch to do this and the punch is the fact that these things are very very tiny but traveling at high velocity now that was the first inkling of cosmic rays but we've discovered several types of cosmic rays in the in the years that have gone by we've got some coming from the sun um, accelerated uh, protons accelerated by the energy um, of the sun we have um, cosmic rays coming from the plane of our galaxy if you imagine that my head is the sun and uh, we're sat in a disk of the galaxy going all the way around us then we get many of these galactic cosmic rays in that band so we know they are coming from our galaxy and they're probably coming from supernovas or possibly neutron star mergers and black hole mergers we, we don't know exactly they're probably coming from all of those things and maybe some things we've not thought of but they are coming within from within our galaxy because they all come from that narrow band that goes around us which is the galaxy but there are other even higher energy cosmic rays and they are coming from all directions every conceivable direction from things that we can't even see and these are coming from um, the other side of the universe, universe basically from extremely high energy events possibly even from quasars um, we don't know exactly but we do know that something the size of for, for something the size of a proton to be packing the physical force of um, uh, a 300 mile an hour tennis ball packed into a proton something cataclysmic must have happened at the point of origin for that proton to give it that velocity and that speed and that punch uh, so the answer to that question is cosmic rays don't get destroyed over short distances they can cross the universe they come at a, a variety of different energies the level of the energy that the proton contains uh, when it's detected tells us something about what must have happened in its formation there are only certain events which are this energetic um, and that's why we find them very interesting uh, we've got a, a nice safe neighborhood but these cosmic rays come from neighborhoods which weren't quite so safe